has God helped you in the months that are past? Have you received any help from God at all? If we put our trust in men, they can disappoint us. In fact, he tells us, man is limited. God of Jacob, who is our God, he lives forevermore. He is our helper. He is our helper. For anyone who may believe, the days have come. From wherever you are listening to me, God has sent me to you and to let you know, you shall be remembered for favor. I say you shall be remembered to be favor. Let's give him praise. Let's exalt him. Father, you are greater than the greatest. You are higher than the highest. We've come to worship and exalt your name. We give you praise and honor this morning. Thank you for your faithfulness and goodness in our lives. A thousand tongues is not enough for you. But we come to praise you this morning. We appreciate you for where you are taking us from, for where we are, and where you are taking us to. Receive all the glory, receive all the praise, receive all the honor, take all the adoration. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are worshiped. Our Father and God, we give you praise again this morning. We thank you for your faithfulness and your kindness in our lives. We are nothing without you, but with you we can do all things. Accept our praise and worship this morning in the name of Jesus. We are here again in your presence to receive from you. We ask shine your light upon your word in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, we give you charge. Speak to every heart this morning in the name of Jesus. We have that engrafted word for each of us. We shall not miss it in the name of Jesus. We cover this atmosphere with the blood of Jesus. We say at the end, let your name be glorified. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. You may please be seated. I want to thank our daddy and mommy Dio for this opportunity to share the word with us again this morning. And I pray as we look into God's word, he will bless us together in the mighty name of Jesus. Our theme for this month is much more than this much more than this. And I want us to go to what we are going to consider our working scripture this morning. Second Chronicles chapter 25. Second Chronicles chapter 25. We'll read some selected verses from verse 1. Second Chronicles chapter 25 from verse 1. I'm going to read in amplified version from verse 1. And it says, Amaziah was 25 years old when he became king. He reigned for 29 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jehoiada of Jerusalem. He did right in the sight of the Lord, yet not wholeheartedly. Verse 3. When his kingdom was firmly established, he killed the servant who had struck down his father, the king. Verse 4. But he did not kill their children, for as he did as written in the law, in the book of Moses, we are the Lord commanded, the fathers shall not die for the children, nor the children die for the fathers, but each shall be put to death of his own Sin. Verse 5. Amaziah assembled the men of Judah and appointed them in accordance with their fathers, household, under commanders of thousands 
and of hundreds throughout Judah and Benjamin. He numbered them from 20 years old and above, and found there to be 300,000 choice men fit for war and able to handle spear and shield. Six, he also hired 100,000 brave warriors from Israel for a hundred talents of silver. But the man of God came to him saying, O king, do not let this army of Israel go with you. For the Lord is not with Israel, nor with any of the sons of Ephraim. That's it. But if you go, in spite of this warning, be strong and courageous for the battle. Yet, God will cause you to stumble and fall before the enemy. For God has the power to help and to cause people to stumble. We shall not stumble in the name of Jesus. And Amaziah said to the man of God, What shall we do about the hundred talents which I have given to the troops of Israel? The man of God answered, The Lord is able to give you much more than this. So Amaziah dismissed the troops that came from Ephraim to go home. So their anger was kindled and burned greatly against Judah. And they returned home in the heat of anger. Verse 14. After Messiah came back from the slaughter of the Edomites, he brought the gods of the son of Seir and set them up to be his gods, bowed down before them, and burned incense to them. So the anger of the Lord burned against Amaziah, and he sent a prophet who said to him, Why have you desired the gods of the people who did not save them, who did not save their own people from your hand? As he was talking, the king said to him, Have we made you the king counselor? Stop! Why should you be put to death? Then the prophet stopped and said, I know. That the God had decided to destroy you because you have done this and ignore my advice. Verse 17. Then Amaziah, the king of Judah, took counsel and said what to Joash, the son of Joash, Joaza, the son of Jehu, the king of Israel, saying, Come to battle. Let us face each other. Then Joash, king of Israel, sent the word to Amaziah, the king of Judah, saying, the little thorn bush in Lebanon went, sent word to the great cedar in Lebanon, saying, Give your daughter to my son in marriage. But a wild beast in Lebanon passed by and trampled down the thorn bush. Verse 19. You say, See, I have struck down and defeated Edom. Your heart leads you up to boast about your beast. Now stay at home. Why do you meddle you and call disaster? So that you, even you, will fall and Judah will be destroyed. Let's stop there. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in our hearts in the name of Jesus. One of the challenges we face as Christians is the ability for you and I to believe the word of God for what he says. The word of God comes to us, but we find it difficult to believe. We find it difficult to trust the Lord with our own heart, not trusting on our own understanding. It seems to us, this word, can it be applied to today? Even if I say, how many of us believe the word of God? We raise up our hand. Yes, we believe. But when the chips are down, when you are alone, when you face adverse circumstances, do you still believe the word of God? It's one of the greatest challenges we have today. And I want to tell you, brothers and sisters, that in the difficult time, it's the best time to trust in the word of God. Because the word of God never fails. The Bible says, heaven and earth may pass away, but not an iota, but the word of God will go on fulfilled. I pray the Lord will give us the grace to stand on his word in the mighty name of Jesus. Media, help me. Let's go to Psalm 33, verse 18 and 20. 
I have some scriptures to read, verse 33, 18, and 20. Let me read from here, but I want you to help me to put it on. It says, Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, on those who hope in his steadfast love, that he may deliver their soul from death and keep them alive in famine. Our soul wait for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. The word of God says, God is able to keep those who fear him in famine. We are in a difficult time in Nigeria. There's no doubt about that. But have you and I gone to the word of God to see what the word of God says concerning you and I for this situation? The words of our mouth at times do not align with what the Bible says about us. The Bible says in the book of Psalm 37, I'm going to read verse 18 and 19. Psalm 37, verse 18 and 19. The Bible says, The Lord knows the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time, and in days of famine they shall be satisfied. That's what the Bible says. It says in the day of famine, the people of God will not only barely survive, that you and I are supposed to be satisfied in famine. But what do we find ourselves today? In this situation, we confess what is happening to us instead of us standing on the word of God. If there's any time you and I need to flourish, it's at this time of famine. Because the word of God says that it's going to satisfy us in famine. Not only believing with our head, but believing it in our heart. And acting it out is what we need to do. That's why the issue of much more comes in. That God is able to do much more than we expect him to do. And he will do the same for us in the mighty name of Jesus. For every promise of God, it's important for you to know that God's role is there, but we also have our own role. God's role is there, but we also have our own role. The God's role is constant. God is always true to his word. But the own role that is always shaking. And when we don't start on our own road, he makes it to look as if the word of God is not true. When God says, I expect you to do this, for you to get this promise, we don't do it, and we expect the promise to come to pass. Now when it does not come to pass, we look and see the word of God is not true. If God says, by his stripes you are healed, by his stripes I am healed, are you standing on that wall or you believe the situation that you are in will determine your own fate? If we need to start standing on the word of God and playing our own role. That's why this morning I want to look at very briefly how do we assess much more in this season? How do we assess much more in this season? How do I assess much more in this season? God is always constant. God's word is always the same. It is me and you that need to have access to it. Because the Bible says, if God said, Jesus said that the sower went to sow the word. And when he went to sow the word, the Bible says, he fell on good ground. And there were one that bought 30 folds. There were one that was 60 fold. And that one was a hundred foot. Why was that difference in the year they brought? Is the way they responded to the word of God. My brothers and sisters, we can assess much more if we do what God wants us to do. So we need to look at it very quickly in three ways. What is the meaning of the phrase much more than this? Number one, what is the meaning of the phrase much more than this? Number two, who is this God of much more? Who is this God of much more? Who is this God of much more? Number three, how to assess much more in this season? 
Last week, our DO did a, a description of the phrase, much more. Much more than this. What does he mean? Much more than this. What does he mean? He said it means there is something bigger. There is something better. There is something greater. There is something deeper. There is something sweeter. There is something higher. Remind me of those phrases. Than where you are presently. Than where I am presently. There is something deeper. If I've had a close relationship with God and I can hear God, there is something deeper than that that God wants to do. If I'm already comfortable and I think I'm a local champion, there is something higher that God wants to do. That is the much more we are talking about. So there's always something better than the position you are presently. There's something sweeter than the position I am presently. There's something bigger than the position I am presently. That is the much more God is talking about. And if you can see it, you can receive it. And we shall all receive it in the name of Jesus. How many of us want something better than where we are? Raise your hand up. You want something better than where we are? Only very few people. I want something better than where I am. There's always something better. There's always something sweeter. There's always something greater. That is what we want to receive at this season. And when I talk about this season, I sense it much more in this season. It's talking about from now to the end of the year. I'm told when you're in the month of August, is eight. Eight means new beginning. And our God is going to start with us a new thing in our lives in the name of Jesus. So let's enter into the season of much more, much more than where we are. That from August to September to October, we enter into the realm of much more. That's what God has planned for us. And it shall be a reality in the name of Jesus. Who is this God of much more? I don't want to see two or three scriptures of this God of much more. We all know Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. The Bible says, Now to him who is able to do, this is an amplified version, super abundantly, more than we dare to ask or think. That our God who is able to do super abundantly, more that we dare to ask or think beyond our greatest prayers or hopes or dreams according to his power that worketh in us. This is the God of much more. He's able to do super abundantly. I want you to picture it in your mind. God is always a God who wants to give us imagination. And that's why he told Abraham, can you look above? Can you look at the stars? Can you count them? You can't count them. He said, those are the way your children will be. He was giving a picture of the future. So we need to have our imagination. What is the super abundance that I want God to do for me? Because he's a God of super abundance. We all know Jeremiah 29, verse 11. The Bible says, our God, He says, for I know the plans and thoughts that I have for you, says the Lord. Plans for peace and well-being, not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. The verse 12, that says, then you will call on me. You will come and pray to me. And I will hear your voice and I will listen to you. That is the thought God has for us. Even though the economics may not be working the way it used to be, but that is God's thought towards us. Let's take that in as a thought of God towards us. That's the God of much more.
in the book of Matthew chapter 7. Media, where the scripture? Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7, verse 9. We are looking at the God of man. It says, What man is there among you? If his son asks for bread, we give him what? Stone. The next verse. We are going to 13. Or if he asks for a fish, we give him what? Snake. If you then who are evil, God says we are evil. Sinful by nature, as you are, know to give good and advantage gift to your children. How much what? How much what? How much more will your father who is in heaven, my father who is in heaven, give what is good and advantageous to those who keep on asking him? How much more? How much more will your father, my father in heaven, Give good gifts to those who ask of them. No parents want his children to suffer. We always want to give them attention what they require. And the Bible says we are still evil. He will know to take care of our children. We are still evil. But our father is a perfect father who will give us much more. And the Kabbalah has from him. Luke 11, 13 says, let me go to Luke eleven thirteen. Luke eleven thirteen, he says, "If you then, being evil, talking about spirit, by sinful nature, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more? How much more? Will your Father, Heavenly Father, give the Holy Spirit?" To those who ask according to nothing. The Holy Spirit is a gift. He said, How much more? In those scriptures we have read, it was Jesus who was speaking here. He was saying, Disciples, your father is so kind, he's so generous, he loves to do much more. He loves to do much more. He gives the Holy Ghost, that is our helper, our comforter, our strengthener. Our standby help. He loves to give it much more to those who ask of him. My brothers and sisters, I want you to picture this God who is much more. Let us go beyond the basics of limiting God. The God we have that Jesus was introducing to the disciples is a God of much more. And it shall be real in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. The final place I want to see it's in Luke 22, Luke 12, rather. Luke 12. Jesus was also speaking here to his disciples. Luke 12, from 22. Luke 12, from 22. Jesus said, let me read here. Jesus said to the disciples, For this reason I tell you, do not worry about your life. As to what to eat, or your body what to wear. Go ahead. 23. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothes. I'm going to 28, quickly. Consider the rain, neither sow, nor reap. They have no stores or barn, yet your God feeds them. Then what did he say here? How much more valuable are you than the birds? How much more am I valuable than the birds? We look and see God does not, is not interested in us. God is interested in my well-being and in your well-being. Jesus was telling disciples, how much more will your father in heaven feed you more than the birds? Verse 24, I mean 20, 25. Okay, let's go to 28 because of our time. Let's go to 28. Jesus was just speaking here. He said, but if this is how God closed the grass, which is the field today and tomorrow is thrown into the furnace. How 
much more will he clothe you, O ye of little faith. Tell your neighbor, are you of little faith? Ask neighbor the second one, are you of little faith? Are you of little faith? Jesus was talking to them, are you of little faith? This is God we are dealing with. It's not a, an helpless God. It's a God of much more. How much more will he clothe you if his clothes you are looking for? If his food you are looking for? He's feeding the bed. He can feed you also. And he will provide for all our needs in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, how do we assess much more? How do we assess much more in this season? Second Chronicles 25. That's our working scriptures I want to look at. The Bible says in that verse 2, that Amaziah did what was right in the sight of the Lord, yet not what, not wholeheartedly. He did what was right, yet not wholeheartedly. My brothers and sisters, the question I want to ask yourself and myself this morning: What is our life? What is the motive for asking for much more? What is the motive? Asking. What is the motive? The Bible says Amaziah did right, but not utterly. I believe his motive was wrong. What was motivating him to go and fight the Edomites was wrong. We know the Edomites, we know who they were. He was fighting the lost battle, but with a wrong motive. The deeper level of work you want to have with God, the greater position you want to have, the better health you want to have, what is the motive behind it? The Bible says we act and we do not receive because we ask and miss. Because it's the wrong motive. For you and I to assess much more, we must have a right motive for what we are asking for. No wonder Amaziah only enjoyed it for a while. And that was the end of it. But that will not be our portion in the mighty name of Jesus is, us, is God interested in our motive? Yes. God is interested in our motive. He said he did right in the sight of the Lord. And I'm not happy, but not wholehearted. That's why his end was bad. As many who did right, not wholeheartedly in the scriptures, they always end in disaster. As many who did right, but not wholeheartedly in the scripture. They always end in disaster. So what is your motive? What is my motive? Because God will do it. But what is motive? Proverbs 16, 2 says, All the ways of a man are clean and innocent. I'm reading Amplified Version. In his own eyes. Spirit and in his, his action. What the Lord ways and examine the motive. Where they say that we are not enough, it doesn't matter you are. Spirit fill us. And that's the end of coming to church. They may pray, and God say, I will not give you 50 million you're asking for. I will only give you 2 million. And they get that 2 million, and they will not go to church again. And they become the boss of their own. How many will God give an elevated position? And they don't want to see people again. Those things that have not prepared you for that much more can hinder you from getting the much more. Because God does not want these of you to be destroyed. What is your motive? What is my motive? You need to check your heart. If God answered the much more you are asking for, what will you do with it? What will you do with it? Can we go to the book of uh, Luke chapter 12? Luke chapter 12. Media, please. Luke chapter 12. Verse 13. Luke chapter 12, verse 13. Holy Spirit, okay, let's go to verse you are To overflow, we need your strength. 
you know we crush your life in a civic scar Against every form oh, oh. of beat Nothing matters more Hey, 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 hey Cause it's life, cause it's life Here's the cry of life Spirit fever Let it not be half of greed Wrong motive if it's out of greed, let's go ahead. I want to see. Come on, 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 come His motive was wrong. God expanded his band. He had more than enough. Much more. But he told himself, now I have so much money, I can travel across the globe. I have so much money, I can buy the best cars. I can live in the best house. And God says, that was not the intention. That was not the intention. He said, you are a rich fool. Tonight, your soul will be taken away from you. But that's not the essence. It was a wrong motive. Brothers and sisters, let's check our motives. Let's check our motive. For those things we are asking for God, what is the motive? Source motive may be wrong. It may be delaying those things from coming to us. But as we put our motive right before the Lord, He will answer us speedily in the name of Jesus. Another thing that we need to do to assess much more this season is to be hungry for more. Is to be hungry for more. We are not going to read 2 Chronicles 25 verse Five and six talks about that when the kingdom of Amadala was established firmly, his kingdom was established firmly. He started to see how he can improve. He went into a head count of the armies, he counted them, and decided to go to war to destroy the Edomites. Despite that, he was in a comfort zone, he was hungry for more. And brothers and sisters, are you hungry for more? Are you hungry for more? Not the hunger of greed. Are you hungry for more? More of a better relationship with God. Are you hungry for more? More of working for him. Are you hungry for more? More to give to the house of the Lord. Are you hungry for more? I said, those who hunger and thirst, the only those who will be satisfied. What is your hunger? Are you hungry for more? He was hungry for more. The Bible says, his kingdom was firmly established. He's supposed to sit down and be resting. And enjoying himself. That's when he went to kill those who killed his father. But he was hungry for more. As he become hungry for a new higher level. A new spiritual experience. A new business. A new relationship. A new insight. The Lord will reach out to us in the mighty name of Jesus. How do we assess this much more this season? Obedience. Obedience to God. Obedience to to God. The Bible tells in that second Chronicles 25, you know, be to read verse 6 to 10. God sent a prophet to Amaziah. Amaziah had paid 100,000, I mean, 100 talents of silver to Israel to join him to war. But the Bible says the king, God sends a prophet. I think it was a command that God had with. David, that must have made God to send that prophet to him. Because we never told Amaziah pray. It must be that covenant God had with David. And the prophet warned him, don't go with Israel. The law is not with them. I pray that this year I will seek for much more. We shall not associate with the wrong people in the mighty name of Jesus. 
The most what God will do is not based on your bravery or your intelligence or your power. It's based on the Lord. But the prophet says, the Lord is not with Israel. If you read that scripture, the Bible says there were 100,000 brave warriors. Brave warriors. You can go to battle with brave warriors. But it says because the Lord is not with them, they are finished. But when I see that, the more, more that God wants to do is the Lord that will be the first place before your intellect will come, before your brain will come, before your knowledge will come. Anybody who is the Lord is not with, you don't have nothing to do with such people. Some people say, I want to bring some new partners. They are intelligent. They have all the professional certification. That is not the basis for much more. The basis is, is the Lord with them. If the Lord is them, all the other ones they walk over. Even the prophet had to tell him, he said, no matter how you try, even if you are strong and courageous, God will still defeat you with them. That was what surprised me. He said, be strong and courageous. So strong, strength, and courage can only happen when God is with you. Strength and courage can only work when the Lord is with you. When the Lord's not with you, you will be flattened out with your strength and courage. That's how God was telling Moses, I mean Joshua. He said, As I'm with Joshua, I will be with you. Only be strong and courageous. That comes after the Lord is with you, not before the Lord is with you. I'm going to be with you as I'm with Moses. Only be strong and courageous. And brothers and sisters, the much more you and I are looking at is not by our strength and courage, it's by the Lord with us. And we shall not leave the Lord in the name of Jesus. So be careful of the alliances you enter into so that we will not go and join with Belia. And no matter their knowledge, everything will go down the drain. But that will not be our portion in the name of Jesus. And Messiah suffered thereafter. The Bible says us that he obeyed the instruction of the prophet and did not allow Israel to go with him. And the Bible says, he has what will be the under talents of silver I've given to them. Under talents of silver. And I try to check the internet. What is under talents of silver worth today? And it says it's worth $1.6 million. That's what under talent of Sevilla is worth today. 1.6 million US dollars is what he parted away with. And the Holy said, God give him much more. I don't know how much more God gave him. Maybe it was three times, four times. So when I tried to convert it in Naira, how much is dollar to Naira now? How much? We don't know. We don't get, we don't deal in dollars. We deal in Naira. If it's at 850, that would be 1.7 billion naira. He was a very wealthy king that he gave out for soldiers to come and join him. And he forget about it. And God gave him much more. Because the Bible says that he defeated 20,000 people. And they had large stock they took away. So whatever we have lost this year, the God is turning back to us in the name of Jesus. If you have lost anything, the God of much more specializes in doing restoration. And that shall be our portion in the name of Jesus. I'm bringing this message to a close. What do we do to assess the much more this season? Let's resist pride. Where God is taking us to is a place that people will envy us. But let's give no room to pride. Because it's not by our hand that we got there. It's because the law was with us that we got there. Let's give no room to pride. And I want to ask you a question as I bring the message to a close. The present you, the present me that I am now, if God decides to elevate you, will he not destroy you? Will he not destroy me? The present you that you are here now, the present me, and God tried to do much more, will he not destroy you? 
with that greed in me? Is he still there? Is that lost? Is he still there? Is he still there? Is that nonchalant attitude? Is he still there? And if God said to take me higher, will he not bring disaster? That was what the ending of uh, Messiah. He went, God gave him victory, he brought other gods and started to worship them. It was a disaster. He became proud because he had won Edomites, thinking it was his power. He went to meet the king of Israel, let's go to war. And the Bible says he was flattened out. He was captured. He was put as an hostage. My brothers and sisters, let's check ourselves. If God do this much more, will he not destroy us? The version of you and I that is there now, God makes you the star of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, for an example. Will we see still in church? Will you be able to assess you again? Will you consider it important to pray or give offering? If you don't take those things away, we are ending ourselves from getting much more. Can we rise up on our feet? I want you to pray for yourself. I will not hinder myself. God is sent out to do much more. I will not hinder myself. Sammy says, Lord, search my heart. See if there's any evil way in me. Cleanse me. I want you to do so such. Some of us need to deal with pride. Because they said money has a spirit. Maybe you have not had like 200, 300 million in your accounts. You will not know how to behave again. And that's the much more we are talking about. I want you to do so such. Father, help me. Let me not hinder myself. Those things that want to hinder me from the much more you are going to do. Let me drop them. Greed, lust, conversiousness, anger. All those vices that eating in my heart and we will not allow that much more to meet me. Lord, I, must, I want you to pray. I want you to pray. Talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord yourself. 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 Father, I ask Lord that you help me. That's much more. I will not allow it to in the name of Jesus, Lord, be gracious. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. If you are here this morning, you want to give your life to Christ. The much more start by having a relationship. We say it is the Lord that is on our side that can bring it. If you are not on the Lord's side, He can't be on your side. So if you want to be on the Lord's side and say, Lord, I want to be on your side. Raise up your hand this morning. I want you to be on your side because that is the starting point. If you are here this morning, you want to give your life to God, say, Lord Jesus, I want to be on your side so you can be on my side. Is there anyone this, this morning? Okay, no one. Father, we want to thank you and bless your name today. Thank you for speaking to us that you are willing and ready to do much more. But it is us who is staying in your hands. We ask all those things in our life that we need to deal with that will bring this much more. Give us the grace to deal with them in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says, let all men be liars, but let God be truth. And we know your word is truth. That much more, we shall enter into it in the name of Jesus. This season, there shall be a flow of abundance in our lives in the name of Jesus. New heights, spiritually, we shall get to in the name of Jesus. Deeper relationship with you, we shall get into in the name of Jesus. Sister fellowship, we shall get into in the name of Jesus. Greater heights, we will move into in the name of Jesus. And you alone shall be glorified. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Are you connected to the online church of the unlimited people? 
Join Foursquare WC on all our social media platforms to get a real-time update on services, stream live programs from any part of the world, watch previous messages, join Christian topical conversations, and get a chance to win some prizes. Foursquare WC is live on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. You can connect with us via your phone social media applications. How? Select Facebook app on your phone app list and search for Foursquare WC. Open it and click on like. For Twitter, select Twitter app, search for Foursquare WC. Open it and click on follow. For Instagram, select Instagram app, search for Foursquare WC. Open it and click on follow. And for YouTube, select YouTube app on your phone, search for Foursquare WC. Open it and click on subscribe. If you don't have any of these apps on your phone, go to your Play Store for Android devices or go to your Apple Store for iOS devices. Search for any of these social media apps and install them. After installation, you will need to log in with your app account username and password. And if you don't have an account with them yet, you will need to register. Click on create an account and fill in your basic information and get connected. First Square Gospel Church will say, we are the assembly of the unlimited people.